Hi everybody! Well, we've made it yet again to another Friday, so happy Friday everyone! The weekend is about to begin. So, we have got, again, thankfully, more Royal News other than the Invictus Games, which I will come to in a little bit. First of all, we're going to start with a couple of Royals, a couple of Princesses that I've not spoken about in some time, and that is, of course, the York Princesses. They were both in attendance at a Vogue magazine event in London, which is quickly becoming one of the biggest fashion events of the year, next to, of course, the Met Gala, but this one is held in the UK. It's in the run-up to London Fashion Week, and this was the second annual Vogue World event held at London's Theatre Royal, Drury Lane. Now, naturally, you have lots of beautiful people. You've got A-listers, you've got actresses, singers. You've also, obviously, got the models, heads of fashion houses, and, of course, the lady herself, Anna Winter. But you also, at these big events, attract aristocracy and high society. They love the fashion. So first of all, we had the beautiful Lady Emma, who is the Marchioness of Bath. Recently, when I went to Longleat, don't worry, that video is coming next. She lives with her husband in the house at Longleat. It's very grand. They actually have the whole of the top floor and you can tour around the bottom part of it. Lady Emma always comes across as very, very kind, very sweet, very gracious. She took part in one of the reality dancing shows and she's really beautiful. She's also proof that a black woman can fully have a wonderful life as part of aristocracy, unlike a certain American who has kicked up such a fuss that she was treated so completely differently. But before we go down that path, let's talk Princess Eugenie. I love the colour, I love the fabric, I absolutely adore the shoes. However, it doesn't quite work. It seems to be wearing Princess Eugenie rather than the other way around. It's made her look incredibly wide on top. Otherwise, the, as I said, the colour, the fabric, everything, beautiful. The princess herself looks gorgeous. Her earrings look divine, but there was just something that didn't quite add up with the look. This colour really suits her and it does remind me of the beautiful tiara that she wore on her wedding day. Now, older sister Princess Beatrice, she knocked it right out of the park. She looked absolutely stunning. The shoes, the gloves, the dress, the detailing, and of course, the lipstick. And, well, shall we add on there the rather handsome husband, Edo, who was by her side. Princess Beatrice looked better dressed than most of the models and actresses that were in attendance. She looks classy, she looks elegant, and she looks incredibly happy with Edo. Look at them, they are so happy and it really shines through and I just love this couple. Now let's move on to Prince William who has done a couple of engagements. The first engagement that he did was a solo trip to a construction site in Acton in London. The Prince of Wales attended the site to meet with construction workers and obviously managers to discuss mental health in the industry. Sadly, and this is something that I was not aware of, suicide rates are three times higher than the national average when it comes to this particular industry and that amounts to approximately two a day, which is absolutely horrifying. It's said that the high pressure deadlines, the long hours, working away from their families, often for very long periods, and of course the instability of employment are all contributing factors. I mean, how many times have you heard of sites being shut down with little or no notice? That leaves a mad scramble for people to find work. The job in itself is incredibly stressful. My husband has worked on a couple of big construction jobs, so I do understand the pressure of deadlines that is put on these people on a regular basis. But because of the, there is that male, we don't talk about our feelings and stuff, you're soft. You know, there is that camaraderie, of course, on construction sites, but there is still that element of it where mental health needs to be less of a taboo, especially when it comes to men across all different sectors. The industry is trying to help normalise talking about mental health, that it's okay to not be okay and you shouldn't feel that you have to hide it and can have easy access to help. And this is one of the things, this story did shock me because it's something that I'd never really thought about. And this is where the royal family do good things because they draw so much needed attention to things that lots of us are not aware of because of the media coverage that comes with every one of their engagements. We hear more about charitable organisations, foundations, medical services, services that are set up that otherwise they may not have had a big enough platform for us to be aware of. Now, moving on, we had a joint engagement from the Prince and Prince 
Princess of Wales, although sticking to the mental health aspect of what the Royal Foundation is trying to do. They were visiting a farm in Hereford and it coincided with the launch of a mental health scheme as part of Prince William's takeover of the Duchy of Cornwall. The royal couple met with Sam and Emily Stables, who started the mental health charity We Are Farm in Mind, after Sam himself went through difficulties and found there wasn't enough support out there. Much like the construction industry, farming is a very stressful job and they often do not have access to the support that they need when they are struggling due to being so isolated and part of rural communities. The couple then moved on to a visit to Madley Primary Forest School, where outdoor learning is prioritised to improve the children's mental health and physical health. The children soon put the royal couple to work, getting them to help build a shelter. Then they sat round enjoying healthy treats over the fire as Catherine chatted away to the children about what it means to them, the things that they enjoy. Prince William and Catherine spent a couple of hours there learning all about the forest school and how it makes a difference to children's lives. Now this is the thing with all of the engagements you can tell that Catherine and William genuinely care about the well-being of others and every visit no matter where it is is about promoting the cause rather than promoting themselves they walk and talk to people they sit down and listen to people they ask questions and it's very clear that they want to learn and understand and see if there's anything that they or the Royal Foundation can do they use their position and platform in life to promote others, which is the polar opposite to what we are now sadly seeing at the Invictus Games in Dusseldorf, especially since Meghan has arrived. Since she has touched down and the fashion show has begun, all of the coverage has changed. If you don't believe me, just type into Google now, Invictus Games. Look at Google Images. You will just have a sea of Meghan. It's just Meghan and Harry, mostly Meghan, Meghan promoting, Meghan hugging people. Now, some people will say it's not Meghan's fault, it's the media's fault. She knows exactly what she's doing because we saw this happen last year. They also received negative coverage because they turned it into the Harry and Megan show. The difference was when Meghan wasn't there, we could actually see so much more of Harry, admittedly, but he was interacting with the athletes and their families. He was on the bleachers, as it were. He was in the thick of it with them. Yes, he had a few official portraits, but he was there being personable with them, which meant a lot of the photographs were of the athletes. They're then telling their stories, cute moments. Now, even on social media, even the hashtags, it's all Meghan Markle and she's reveling in it. She's loving it. She is grinning to herself and laughing to herself like a crazy person when no one else around her is. She knows that camera is on her and she is playing up to it. And Harry is looking more and more miserable because now Harry is sitting in the back seat and he's got no one else to blame. He enables this behaviour. The fact that she's turned it into a fashion show, changing her outfits on one day, three times in one day. She's wearing so much designer gear in the thousands. Whereas in the beginning, when she was part of the royal family, they were walking around and going to events in the Invictus Games logoed polo shirts, jackets. Again, this would be good promotion for the Invictus Games, but instead, Megan is promoting herself. She's deliberately showing off certain things that she's wearing. That's why she's always got her hand up in the air. People are noticing, oh, she's changed her jewellery. She's changed this. It's all deliberate because she is using the Invictus games for merchandising opportunities. If she had just dressed down wearing sports gear, she would have blended in with the crowd. Megan is not reading the room because she is making it all about herself. That's why I truly believe that she came three days later. It was to draw maximum attention to Mimi. She's done another outfit like she did last year in a subtle nod to Princess Diana. It's all about ensuring Megan gets as much coverage as possible. Now, whilst the veterans are obviously being polite, the children, however, are not afraid to show their true feelings. And to be honest with you, if you actually really start scanning the photographs of veterans, a lot of them do have sour faces whenever Megan is on. There are sadly so many empty seats at these games. Megan and Harry are slowly chewing away at the goodwill and the love for the Invictus Games because people don't want to read about it because they are being inundated with Megan and Harry loved up. Megan and Harry acting like they're 
on a date. Yeah, I get the fact that these two hold hands, it's their thing, but the canoodling and the cuddling up in the crowds, they're meant to be there on an official visit to support the games. Yes, there's nothing wrong with cheering and clapping and being happy, but it's the way that they're doing it and she knows that camera is on her. Harry is now pushed to the background. She overtalks him, she's back to tapping him. They're here to see me, Harry. He's back to looking miserable, angry, but firmly attached to his wife's side. When he's not glaring at someone, they're all over each other like they're on a date. Megan has made this all about her and Harry enables it. Megan coming three days later has proved that she is a negative force. Harry is now only posing for photographs with her. He's so busy paying attention to his wife that he is no longer interacting with the athletes and families outside of photo opportunities. Now, Megan absolutely knows exactly what she's doing. And I would say she's even taken it this one step further this year where she's pre-planned an attention grab, not just turning up three days later to her own entrance and giving a speech, but she has taken it to a level that's mind-blowing. In May 2022, last year, a month after the Invictus Games and Meghan's last fashion show, Nigeria announced that they would be joining the Invictus Games and they would have their debut at the Dusseldorf 2023 Games. Several months later, Meghan, miraculously at 40 years old, finds out that she's 43% Nigerian. This gets plastered all over the newspapers. So it's pretty convenient, isn't it, that the year Nigeria sign up to the Invictus, and there's lots of positive coverage for Nigeria, Megan decides at 40 years old that she's going to do a genealogy test, and miraculously, she's 43% Nigerian. So of course, in the run-up to the games, we've had lots of little bits come out. Megan will be there cheering on Nigeria. So what happens the first day that Megan touches down? She's focused photographed declaring hugging one of the Nigerian athletes she's her Nigerian sister okay so that's number one number two obviously when Nigeria play Megan goes to meet the team look at these photographs Megan is the one signing their flag Megan is the one at the front they're now saying that Megan is the Nigerian princess you're telling me that she didn't plan all of this, that everything she's been doing is in the build-up to make sure that this, this is all about her. Harry, as you can see, his head is pushed right to the back. He is surplus to requirements. All of the selfies are with Megan. The Nigerian team and the families there are so welcoming of her. But at the end of the day, Megan, I believe, is using them. Now, I believe this because it was only a few years ago before Meghan met Harry, where Meghan had had no interest in her black history, her black genealogy. She's got relatives in certain parts of America who are actually asking for her to come down and see them in Georgia, which of course they have been completely ignored. But of course, Meghan in 2015, she went to Malta because she was telling people that she's actually of Maltese heritage. Malta which I'm wow. so excited about. My great-great-grandmother's from Malta. How I've wonderful. never been. So I'm going with a genealogist. That's sort so of like cool. Track, yeah. and track it down. Yes, that is Megan's own voice. She went there with a genealogist, okay, to find out her roots, where she came from. Megan tried to tell people that her great-grandmother was Maltese, and in a way, she was, but nothing to do with DNA. In Megan's own words, she said, I was trying to understand where I come from. Before I came, people were telling me, when you go to Malta, everyone will look like you. Oh my gosh, I do sort of blend in. And it was the loveliest feeling. Basically, she's saying that she is of Maltese heritage and she finally found a place where she fits in. Certainly didn't mention Nigeria, did she? Turns out her great-grandmother was born in Malta to Irish parents who had actually travelled from Ireland to India to Malta with the army. Her great-grandmother was born there alongside another child and then they all moved to Canada. So Meghan doesn't have a single drop of Maltese DNA. She does have a lot of Irish blood in her, however. So isn't it rather convenient that that's all been brushed over and now Meghan miraculously, with all of her other heritage, she's now 43% Nigerian, just perfectly in time for this big moment at the Invictus Games. Meghan is in a league of her own. Narcissists are known for using people, but Meghan uses whole countries to promote herself.
It's honestly mind-blowing stuff, isn't it? It's truly outstanding. But with all of this being said, the problem is even veterans across social media, lots of people can see what she is doing to the Invictus Games. She's turning it into the Meghan show, the Meghan and Harry show, where he's the side part to it. And people are losing interest and as i said a lot of the stands when the camera scans around in video clips you can see there's lots of empty seats people are not reading about it because they just see megan's face everywhere people are switching off if this type of coverage continues and if the invictus games choose to promote these two like they are doing rather than the athletes then I believe that the Invictus Games is really going to start struggling because of them. Now, her team, and I know it's her team, have come out with a counter story. And they said that it's because of the royal family, because of the feud, the royal family are being petty by not promoting the Invictus Games. After everything Harry and Meghan have done to the royal family, Harry has made it clear the Invictus Games is his. Members of the royal family do not get involved with others' projects. This is Harry's. He wanted it. He's taken it. He's claimed it as his. Why on earth would William and Catherine, the king and queen, when they've got all of their royal charities, all of their foundations, their organisations and their commitments, promote something which is now sadly, as I said, being used as a cash cow and a PR tool for Harry and Meghan? They're not going to. So I believe that they're beginning to receive enough negative backlash about the fact they've turned it into the Harry and Meghan show. And they are, of course, now trying to say it's not our fault. Somehow, somehow it's still the royal family's fault. Truly unbelievable. I hope more veterans and people do start to get involved and start campaigning and speaking to the MOD. Whilst I believe that Harry, when he was just there by himself, it wasn't as bad, the negative coverage is definitely going to continue to impact the games and I do not want to see those games get cancelled. I want to see it keep growing, I want to see more countries join into it and most importantly, I'd actually like to see the coverage of it outside of what Megan's wearing. So guys, that's it for me. I'm going <laughs> to finish this video and do the long week one. So I will see you super soon. Take care for now. Happy Friday.